Do you know the saying, when one door closes, another opens? Can you imagine how frustrating that must be for a triangle, a hexagon, or a square in a world of circular doors? I mean, the circle just gets to walk through, and she doesn't quite understand that her other friends won't fit. Do you resonate with one of these shapes? Are you a circle, or are you a square? I was born a circle, and I grew up privileged. I grew up in the Baltimore suburbs with acres of grass, two extremely attractive puppies, <laughs> and two slightly less attractive brothers. <laughs> Fortunately, they're not here to defend themselves, so <laughs> sorry to them in advance. My parents gave us everything. They bought me a horse when I was 15. They bought me a car when I was 16. And they took me college shopping at age 18, only to discover that my ideal education was waiting for me here at the University of Maryland. Go Terps! <laughs> and they provided everything for us from this incredible childhood to my college tuition. There was just one problem. I didn't recognize that I got to just walk through these doors while other people remained stuck on the other side. And because of this, I thought that I just had to work hard for the degree I earned in 2013. I mean, if you had asked me back then how hard I had worked for that degree, believe me, I would tell you. To me, I worked hard for this. I earned that degree and it was mine. But like I said, I didn't recognize what other people had to overcome to get to the same spot that I, was a, that I was in. I was a circle, born into a circular family, and we were living in a world of circular doors. And you see, what you are born to, what you are born into, is invisible to you. You don't realize when you grow up with privilege that others may not have the same thing. Growing up, you don't realize that other kids may not go to the best schools or have married parents or have acres of grass to play in. What others don't have that you are born to is simply invisible to you. I mean, never before in my life did I realize that being born a circle, I had access that other shapes didn't have, like the triangle or the square. And we don't realize when you live in the same world that's the same shape as you, that those doors to success share your shape. Until that door changed shape. And that door changed shape for me five years ago. And there's no better way for me to explain to you my oval door than to show you where I've traveled from in the past 24 hours to get here. Shelby L. Dwoski, and I'm a helicopter pilot in the United States Navy. And I'm also the 8%, and 8% is the percentage of female pilots in our Navy today. Now, you might be asking yourself, why do women join the military? Why would anyone willingly give up a portion of their privilege to become a minority. And these, questions and these questions puzzled me for years. Growing up with brothers and a father who taught me how to survive in a man's world, and a mother who taught me this isn't a man's world, 
made me hyper-competitive, aggressive, and thirsty to prove anyone wrong. I joined to challenge the status quo, but I didn't realize that being a minority was truly difficult because I had never been one. Now, I've spent five years as the 8%, and it wasn't until last year that I consciously recognized I was a minority. I'm going to share an experience with you. Last fall, my squadron was given an incredible opportunity. And myself and another female aviator had just returned from a deployment. In the week leading up to this mission, two significant events occurred. First, myself and the only other female pilot were tasked with filing paperwork, transporting boxes, doing anything and everything you would expect of a personal assistant. Now, we didn't want to believe that we were unconsciously being tasked these things because of our gender. And it would have been acceptable had our male peers been asked to do the same. But later that week, when we were called, jokingly, glorified secretaries, and I quote, are bitches. My worst nightmare was confirmed. I am neither of those things. I'm a pilot and a professional. And while a secretary is absolutely a dignified position and necessary in every organization, that wasn't the job I signed up to do. Now, second, I want to tell you when it physically became apparent that my door had changed. Have any of you ever walked into a room and felt like you were the only one of your kind? You didn't see anyone quite like you, so you go to the back of the room, you sit by yourself, and you pretend you're invisible. You're vulnerable. These thoughts of self-doubt rush through your head. Do I deserve to be here? Do I belong? And last fall, myself and the only other female pilot during the week leading up to this mission walked into a room with many men seated in chairs turn and stare. We walked through an oval door into a meeting we were accidentally not invited to and were greeted with the words, nice of you to show up. You can imagine why we might start to believe that maybe we don't deserve to be there. And in that instant, I recognized we were the only women in the room. And I wanted to be invisible. Now, the words that we say towards each other and the unconscious bias we have because of differences we are born with or into can change people's lives. And it can also change someone's future. 25 years later, it took losing one drop of privilege for me to recognize the truth behind achieving my success. And some of you here may still not believe that privilege is something we are born with or into. So for those of you, I have a question. There's one more way to make my case. How many of you have had to go to the bathroom today? Raise your hands. Come on. <laughs> Everyone's had to go to the bathroom. OK. All right. So now that we've cleared that up, I want you guys to imagine, for the women in the room, that you are strapped into your seats and you can't physically leave. OK? So for the rest of the conference, the women, you're strapped into your seats. You can't leave. Now, for the men here, I want you to look at my flight suit. It's easy for a long, hot mission for you to properly hydrate, unzip, and use relief tubes in our aircraft to do what we call a leak check. <laughs> now, these tubes in our aircraft are so durable and fantastically designed that it makes it easy for everyone to go to the bathroom. But there's just one problem. I don't have the proper equipment to use those tubes. And you might be saying to yourself, Shelby, there's no way in 2018 women can't pee in military aircraft. And you would be right. We have designed solutions. So I want to ask you, how many of you here are parents? 
Don't be shy. It's okay. All right, so you might be familiar with these. You may have used hundreds of them on your babies or toddlers. And no, it's not a diaper that my older brother is modeling from the 1990s, but rather the AMXD Max Generation 2 Aircrew Advanced Mission Extender Device. And for an affordable price of $4,000, I get to wear this, I can pee in it, and then it sucks the pee into a tube that goes into my right pocket. Now you might be saying to yourself, there's no way I'm sitting in a wet diaper while on a long mission or employing weapons. And you would be right, which is why in 2018, this isn't good enough. And my mom, in fact, made a suggestion the other day. She said, well, why don't you just go out and buy diapers for 20 bucks? And to her, I said, thankfully, we do have a $20 solution. And this is called the Lady J adapter. And this allows us to use those relief tubes in the aircraft. So when I heard about these adapters two years ago, I went to my squadron and I asked to order them. And what they told me, oops, sorry. What they told me was that they wouldn't be able to order them because they didn't stock them on the shelves anymore. So I sent an email, which led to another email which started this incredible conversation. You see, when the doors to success don't share your shape, you have to speak twice as loud to be heard half as much, and you have to work twice as hard to earn half as much. And that's why it's taken us 20 years to develop the products that I just showed you. But unfortunately, women are so good at adapting their behavior that when these products became available, we didn't order them, and so they didn't supply them. Now, thankfully, with the support of many men in our squadron, I will be able to wear this next week. But for those who don't have it, they have to surrender to tactical dehydration. And that's a technique women in naval aviation have been using since 1993, where we purposely don't drink water so that we don't have to use the bathroom on these long missions. In 2013, a military journal published a study that found pilots who lose 1 to 3% of dehydration compared to properly hydrated pilots also experience a 57% reduction in flight performance. And to make it even more of a case, in 2009, a study argued that the risks of tactical dehydration were greater than that of intoxication. And like I said before, thankfully next week, with the support of men in our squadron, I will be able to use one of these adapters so that I too can do a leak check. <laughs> so what's the lesson here? Circumstances change your privilege. Privilege is something you are born with or into, but it isn't bad, and it can be used for good. Did you notice how I said, with the support of men, we were able to order those adapters? They heard our frustration and fought to get a piece of equipment that did not directly affect them, so that women can now focus on their job instead of their bladder. And remember when I said, we were called our bitches. Immediately after that statement, my officer in charge stood up and said, that's wrong, you can't say that. You. you see, when you're a minority, there are people that stand against us. But for every single one who stands against us, there is one who stands for us. In the race that is life, some people start one mile ahead, and others start many miles behind. And I recognize I in no way have walked a mile in someone else's shoes, but I did take a single step. It is our duty when we're in the position of a minority to pave the road for those that come after us. But it is also our duty when in the position of a majority to level the playing field. And whether you are 
a circle, or a square, I challenge you to knock these doors down and to rebuild them so that all people of all shapes and sizes can too walk through their door. Thank you.